uh, DII, Dave Diamond Industries. I'm Dave. I'm the uh, owner of Dave Diamond Industries. And I've been uh, lucky enough that I've got a load of crazy stuff around here. It's constantly moving. So I should really tell you like a thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> what is your title? I don't know. You just uh, let's everything. see. Uh, Smile maker. Smile maker. <laughs> I like that. Okay, right on. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about beginning hand pan tips and tricks. And we know that a lot of you out there have been saying, the holiday message about purchasing either a new hand pan or uh, maybe a rental hand pan from us as well. And there might be some of you out there who are still browsing and kind of looking around and seeing what other navigating store clerks are doing and kind of looking for some tips or hints about getting new hand pans in. So we're going to be talking about some basics and that kind of thing today to kind of get a lot of people started after the holidays. Um, first of all, don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. There's a little red subscribe uh, word down kind of below in the screen. So do that. And uh, I can't hear Oh, 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 oh. There oh. we go. Are we better? Oh. We are better. There Hello? We go. Right, can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? Yeah. I'll start over. <laughs> start over. All right. We're starting All right. Over. Take two. <laughs> take two. <laughs> I see a little... Uh, now it's working. There it is. All right. Carrie's calling. Hold on. We'll go oh, around oh. that. Can you, can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Still can't hear us? Can't hear us? That's weird. T testing one, two. It's showing now. What do, the, what do the messages say? Can you hear? Can you hear? Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna turn it up one more. Turn it up, turn it up. Very bad volume, can't hear you. Sound is very low, better, can hear now. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in and helping us out with the audio. I love there. technology yeah. and live stuff, it's so funny. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're gonna start over real quickly here. So I'm Dave, this is Daniel. We're here with Dave's Island Instruments, DII. Uh, we're going to be doing a hand pan show today for all of you out there that have either either purchased a hand pan or rented a hand pan over the holidays um, and anybody out there that's just inquisitive and wants to learn more about hand pans. So thanks for joining us today. Our topic is beginning hand pan tips and tricks. So we're going to be talking a lot about uh, the basics of hand pans and how to kind of navigate the instrument and uh, the, the names of the different parts and that sort of thing just to bring you all up to speed. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber. Uh, you get notifications. That's right. He's pointing over there somewhere uh, over there. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> over there, I think. <laughs> uh, the red subscribe button. Click that and you get notifications. And it'll also come up uh, uh, as you're browsing sometimes uh, different things that we post from time to time. Um, also, don't forget to go to our website, davesislandinstruments.com, and become a newsletter subscriber. Uh, we send out newsletter emails uh, from time to time, and we give you lots of information there as to what we're doing uh, and announcements like, like about this class and that sort of thing. So you get announcements and all sorts of uh, things like that. Also, don't forget, we've got a uh, presence on social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook. We do post things there. And in fact, today on Instagram, if you go to Instagram, at davesislandinstruments, um, I posted a QR code, and the QR code will take you to our um, DII community page, which is an online handpan lessons platform. Dave so if so you're techy. interested, that's yeah. right. So if you're interested in going <laughs> nice. to the online lessons today, you can just go to our Instagram account at Dave's Island Instruments, and you can find that QR code there. Uh, before I get too much farther, I want to welcome a bunch of you who are watching right now. I noticed there was a bunch of people that. Uh, uh, signed up for this uh, live class, and uh, so I just want to name some names here. I'm going to put my glasses on and read these names off. <laughs> Welcome all of you. So let me, let's see, we've got Z, Belinda, Yasmina, Shauna, Kate, Adrian, Karen, Carlos, David, Maddie, Pamela, Tim, Chris, Summer, Mary Lou, Becca, Aaron, Helen, Amal, and Jean. So thanks for joining Woo! us today and registering for this class. One person actually asked the question. They said, well, what's, why should I watch this class live? Is there, or can I watch it later? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can watch it later. It's going to be you know, saved on our YouTube account. Yeah. But why should they watch it now? Because they uh, can. You can, add, you can ask questions. Like, That's right. To Dave, because obviously if, you try, if you've tried to call Dave's Island, usually you get an answer. Answering <laughs> machine. <laughs> yeah. So in Dave's, Dave's hard at work, Dave makes all these pans. <clears throat> handmade so like right now after uh last year we've been like kind of low on stock so dave has to get back into the shop Getting so he's busy there, yep. so yeah you know this is a great time to ask dave questions you know if you guys have technical questions about the hand pans if you're a beginner you have you can get a lot of good information right now so it's kind of yeah cool. absolutely so yeah. thanks for tuning in everybody yeah um, i'm going to turn on my little screen over here so i can watch can the, i give a shout out real coming, quick to coming in because, um, oh, yeah, can I give a shout out? Show? Actually, yeah. there's been, um, in January, you know, after we, we had like the holiday sale and then we had 
um, after January, like this January has been really busy because everybody, um, it feels like um, there's a vibration in the air and people are like uh, wanting to find out more about music. And I just want to mention these people that I had great conversations. I love all our handpan customers because, you know, I think we all understand vibration. But um, Yasmina, uh, she's awesome. If Yasmina, um, if you're there, uh, please put your uh, Instagram tag in there because not only is she amazing about uh, what we talked about, but she makes these amazing shawls that she sells, and they're just awesome. And you got to see her stuff. She's a photographer, and she has some great stuff. Evan Wolf came in the other day, um, a local, excited about um, getting a new hand pan. I think, Dave, you're going to make a custom pan for him. Tom, Thomas Shoyer, if you're watching, you're out there in Texas, and... I, I can't remember if you, if you got your hand pan already, but I know you got one coming out, but we had some great conversations. Amin, Mo, um, uh, Amin um, up in Fremont, he's renting right now, and we had some just awesome conversations with these people. I just want to mention their name. Alia the other day, I had a lesson with her in Westwood, and Trina Bell in Slow um, came down, got a rental, and she's excited about playing hand pan. So, for all you guys, I love to share knowledge with you guys, and thank you for sharing what you guys have. Absolutely. So, that's awesome. Awesome. All right. Thanks to everybody. All right. So beginning tips and tricks. Uh, why watch live? Of course, like we mentioned before, put your comments. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to put them in the comments section right now, so that way yeah, we can kind of read them and uh, uh, get some answers to you quickly as we move along. Quick. Let's see um, what we got. Yeah, well, I think most of it's just like really fun stuff right now. Is it fun and stuff? I think Carrie, Carrie's in the background also adding, yeah, adding yeah, some yeah, stuff. Totally so, my so answers, I'll answers take a look. All right, let's see. Boom. Everybody. Wow, thank you for all the kudos, everybody. That's awesome. All right, go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Yes, yes, me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all awesome. right. So, uh, hand pan basics. So, I know a lot of you already have one in your laps and that sort of thing, probably right now. Uh, but this is a hand pan if you haven't seen one before. It's got the top shell, which is the top shell here. And it looks like a turtle shell. A lot of people say turtle shell. And it's got the bottom shell. Sometimes the bottom shell has these notes on the bottom. Sometimes it's just blank. Like this one over here has a rental. A lot of you might have one of our rentals and it has got the yellow bottom. So it just kind of indicates that it's a rental. So we all know. So this is a rental and it's got eight notes on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and then this one over here that I have in front of me this is our Gaia model, and it has nine on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and on the bottom, it's got three. So we call this uh, a 12 note, right? 12 so note. we uh, typically the, the Gaias come with uh, just uh, nine notes on top. Like that one has just uh, the nine notes on top. So you can see on the bottom, it's just got the regular old uh, flat kind of bottom. And by the way, hey, by the way, let me show that bottom again really quick. So see how you see some of this, uh, this color that changes from dark to light here? So a lot of beginners wonder about how to take care of their hand pans. So I just wanted to bring this up really quick. So how to take care of your hand pan. So if you got a stainless or if you have a Gaia model, which is nitrided steel, I'm just suggesting that both now use the stainless steel cleaner. So I just got this stainless steel cleaner just from like a, uh, like a regular store. Um, and then I just uh, shake it up a little bit, put it on a little rag like this. And you can just kind of clean it up like that, make it look all pretty again. And so as the stainless cleaner kind of just dries, that's why it, it ends up um, looking uh, mottled like that. And I just wanted to show you that's how we do it here at DII. We just clean them up like that. So pretty. Yeah. So and this is a ding. Yeah, you can, you can wipe off your hand pans <laughs> uh, anytime you want. Like uh, if you ever go to the beach or someplace that's moist, say you play outdoors at night and all of a sudden the condensation is getting on everything, uh, you probably, after you play, you want to make sure that you wipe off your hand pan like this. Even if you don't use um, stainless cleaner like this, let's say you didn't have any stainless cleaner with you, just bring a rag with you. Um, and you can use really just water just to wipe off any kind of oils or salts that get onto the surface of the uh, hand pan uh, or mild acids. So as we all know, our, our sweat has some mild acids mm -hmm. and some uh, mild uh, like salts and acids in them. So, oils, so just wipe those off. Uh, another thing you can use in a pinch is like a, a window cleaner, like Windex or something like that. Um, that's really good to kind of get some of those oils off of the surface of the hand pan as well. So uh, if you want to do a more thorough cleaning, then you can use that stainless cleaner and it's always really good to do that from time to time. So 
for all of you out there who have questions about how to take care of them. So that, by the way, that's just for our stainless and our Gaia models. Um, do you have the, the clarity over there? So if you have a um, Luna Clarity or a Luna Satin well, I'm hold hand it. pan, these are powder coated. Um, and you can see it has kind of got that glossy finish. Now these actually don't need any stainless cleaner or any kind of special cleaner at all, except for maybe glass cleaner if you want to get some oils off of it from time to time. But uh, this coating, the powder coating is super durable and it, it doesn't really have any issues uh, with salts or ocean environments or um, that sort of thing. So those are really durable finishes. These others just need a little extra care is all. Okay, so we talked about it has the top shell, bottom shell. The hole right here is called the goo hole, G-U. And uh, that was the name given it to by the inventors who invented the hang drum over in Switzerland. Someone asked... Uh, oh, got a question. Got a question. Uh, Yasmina, oil can protect from ocean wet as well? Um, I'm, I'm, I didn't uh, suggest oil. So uh, don't use oil on your hand pans. Uh, this is a stainless steel cleaner. So it probably removes oil. Um, I'm actually at Yasmina. I think I gave a, a frog lube. A oh, frog lube. Okay, yeah. frog lube is uh, also something that's uh, it keeps um, keeps it from getting corroded or rust and getting mm -hmm. onto it. So you can also use frog lube. It's actually uh, made for guns of all things to keep guns rust free. Um, but the cool thing about frog lube is it's completely like biodegradable or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can eat the stuff. You can get it on your fingers and lick them if you want to. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. As a yeah, exactly. I haven't done it. <laughs> but, but that's what they, we'll that's do what a they say. We'll do a taste test of frog yeah. lube. <laughs> but yeah, you can use frog lube also, which also you just don't need very much of that. You just need to wipe it on so it kind of gives a consistent color. And you can even wipe it off after you wipe it on with a uh, like a paper towel, uh, something like that, just to kind of remove the excess. I, I usually don't really uh, suggest paper towels. I would always suggest these uh, microfiber cloths or a, a really nice soft cotton cloth to wipe off your hand pants. Well, I've heard of people any... like, you know, especially with the Gaia's because it's more steel. Uh, weren't they using like olive oil and stuff oh, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. to yeah. get yeah. a Coconut oil. I think that's what Coconut it was. oil? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coconut oil. I've heard of olive oil just to give it a patina because sometimes that might change the color mm -hmm. of it with the olive oil and the coconut. But some people love that. It's like steampunk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Steampunk. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the only, the only thing I would say about the oils, if you're going to use any kind of like coconut oil or something like that, uh, it can build up. And mm. if you have too much on the instrument, it starts making it sound a little bit dull. Uh, and it doesn't resonate as well. So just make sure if you do any, use any of those kind of alternative products that you just make sure you wipe it on and then wipe it off with a clean towel just so that you remove all the excess. I think that's a good little there you caveat go. to think about. You heard it straight from the <laughs> awesome. Well, I want people to get to know because like you hear about these things like, oh yeah, we'll use olive oil or coconut yeah. oil, but how do you use it? How much do yeah. you use? You know, what 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 is it you're trying to do with your hand pan? But, Ultimately, stainless steel cleaner, frog lube are probably really safe. Um, that we suggest the other ones. It's up to you what you guys want to do. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, ultimately, you don't want it to build up and make it sound worse. You want it to make it sound good. Sometimes that some of those oils also make it feel sticky. So mm -hmm. I, I don't like that yeah, sticky yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah, the sticky feel. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, back to the hand pan. The middle note right here, if you didn't already know, is called the ding. D i n g. The ding note. And it's like the main bass note of the instrument. Everyone tends to love the ding note. You know, I love playing it too. Like Everyone it. loves playing the ding note. Uh, in this case, these are both um, sunset scales, D minor sunset scales. A lot of people out there in the handpan world call this a Celtic minor scale. Um, it's a very common scale. It has a really lovely sound. And it's great for beginners and advanced people playing alike. I really like it because it just feels, even though I've been playing for a long time, I always feel like I can go somewhere with this with this scale. Um, like musically, I can always kind of adventure myself into some other new little territory that I haven't been to before. Mm -hmm. um, whereas some scales uh, kind of lock you in a little bit to a certain kind of feel or certain kind of sound. What do you think? Um, yeah, I like Dave has way more experience than I do on sounds and all of it. But yeah, um, when I play other scales, like we do have like a, we have the F sharp over here that kind of gets oh, yeah. limited. Um, I've played like a jazz scales and stuff like that and I love them they sound great but it just seems like you're stuck into it D minor is like a great all around like playing with other instruments you know doing different things and stuff like that and that's why I like it so it's cool yeah yeah, it's yeah. Got lots of uh, yeah. options open to you yeah all right so this is the ding note on top the other notes around the edge <clears throat> some people call them tone fields 
Uh, other people call them notes, so I've started calling them tone field notes just to combine the two. <laughs> so tone field notes, and then yeah, Daniel was pointing to these little dimples right there, and we call those oh, or the the middle side. Where are you talking? yeah, the oh, dimples. I'm just going avocados. So these are <laughs> avocados. I'm being yeah. Vanna, Vanna. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. So these are called dimples, D-I-M-P-L-E-S, um, like on a face, a dimple. And those dimples, people ask, what do they do? Why are they there? Um, they basically control the sound a little bit and make it more of a mellow sound rather than a bright, like a steel drum kind of sound. A steel drum has a brighter sound. Uh, by adding these dimples, uh, the notes sound a little bit more mellow and uh, meditative. <clears throat> so that's why they're there. Some people have larger dimples. Some people have uh, hand pans with smaller dimples. But again, it's just at that point, it just becomes like a tonal or a characteristic sound. So uh, maybe something with a larger dimple might have like a, maybe a mellower sound or a drier sound. Something that has a smaller dimple might have a brighter sound, that sort of thing. So you'll see hand pans out there on YouTube and stuff, and they have all sorts of different varieties of the way hand pans are made. But that's what you'll notice over time is uh, certain distinctions about how they sound. Um, so uh, another question is, how do you actually hit? Oh, we have a question. There's a question actually okay. going back to the how to position the hand pan. Ah, how to Argavon. position it. Okay. Argavon, how are you, Argavon? <laughs> um, yeah. So oh, okay. How, how to set place it? Okay. How to place it. So this one, uh, you can see on this guy right here, he's got the logo in front. This is a nine note. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We put the logo right at the top, so it would be at the twelve o'clock position. Interestingly, some of our eight notes, like this one here, you want to show? Them? Yeah, I'll show. Them. That one, we put the logo slightly to the left because it fits between the notes better right there. Um, and so with the eight note hand pans, usually our Luna Gaia, uh, sorry, our Luna uh, Satin or Luna Clarities, it's kind of at the 1130 position, the logo is. <clears throat> so when you have it, you have like the smallest note. Look for the smallest note. The DII, if you guys have the rentals, is going to be on your right hand side. You should have three notes on each side. So oh, yeah. on your, on your um, right hand side, you have one, two, three. And then on your left hand side, you're one, two, three. This sounds different. This is a G minor, so it's going to sound different. But that's how you should look at it. Okay. Once you get it down this way, then you'll figure it out how to play. Because mm -hmm. you can play backwards, you can play sideways if you want to. But that's once you get more advanced and stuff. So. Yeah, exactly. Ultimately, you can just twist it around and play it in any direction. But the most comfortable direction that I like to play it in is kind of like with the logo at the top. Again, now if you don't have a logo on your hand pan, let's say you bought it from somebody else and their logo is maybe in a different spot, um, it usually works out where your your ding note's in the center, and then the next lowest note is going to be usually your right hand, and then after that it follows right, left, right, left, like that. And you can see my right hand stayed on this side, my left hand stayed on this side. I didn't do any crossovers or anything like that. Um, so that's typically kind of the way it is. With this nine note, there's one, two, three, four on this side, and on this side, there's four on that side. So on that yeah, one, you're talking about three. On the three. rental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show them on the rental. Dun, right. dun, 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 dun. So for those of you with the rentals, there it is. The position is right here. Yep. The DII symbol is usually on your left hand side. Okay. Smallest note at the top. position to do the full scale and then for those of you that have taken lessons from me you know that's what I teach in the beginning and you want to get all those fingers going and you want to be able to do this blind eyes yeah. closed <laughs> 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 yep so that's basics of uh, where the notes are and, and how they're set up um, I'm going to talk a little bit about getting that sound out of the instrument so you can kind of see here the way I'm striking it. I'm striking it to some degree with just slapping the instrument and letting the tip of my finger hit the center of the dimple. Now one thing you need to make sure you do is not to cover the note like this. So you can see kind of my hand is touching the entire note. So this entire surface right here, the whole oval area, uh, is vibrating. So if you're touching any of that, it's going to mute it. So let's say I'm playing it with my index finger over here, but I've got something touching it over here. It's not going to work. Or say another part of my hand over here is touching, it's, not, it's going to inhibit the vibration. So make sure that you 
strike the note and then come immediately off of the note. Oh, go ahead. Tell tell us about what you got. Oh no no, I was just being oh. the holder right, so, of the bell. So watch this. If I can make that bell ring by tapping the button and coming off of it, it's a very similar stroke. Now, if I hold the button down, you see the bell doesn't ring. See that? So sometimes people might do that, and it still kind of rings, so you, whoever you're trying to find would you know, know yeah. you're there. But if you want to get that really nice ring, you have to tap the button and come off of it. So it's the same kind of motion here on a handband. So that's a, uh, one of the basic strokes or basic methods of producing sound on the handpan. And you can practice that going, by going back and forth from your left to right hands on any of the notes, really. Now, the notes that are kind of towards your belly, which are on an A and a C on most of the handpans that we saw here at DII, uh, sometimes a little bit of an uncomfortable position, like your hand has to be uh, angled like this in order to play it. See how that note is kind of an odd position? What you really want to do is try to avoid getting your hand uh, bent too far because it, it makes it tight. So what I do is I will take the hand pan and I will lift the back toward uh, the, my chest a little bit. So if I have a stand, I lift it towards my chest a little bit and that allows this note to be played with more of a straight wrist. reaching out to the high notes, your hands are also kind of in a straight position. Not rigid, just a relaxed straight position. So that allows you to play kind of in the same position almost in the entire hand pan. So if you leave it flat like this, sometimes your wrists are really angled back here. It feels great up top, but back here it's kind of awkward. Uh, another way of people playing these notes is sometimes with their thumbs. So a lot of people um, play with their thumbs. adept with playing with their thumbs. Uh, in fact, sometimes I'll play these notes with my thumbs when I'm playing multiple notes at the same time. So say I'm playing the A and the D at the same time, I'll play my thumb here and my index finger here. And that's a really nice relaxed position to be in. So you don't really have to move it as much if you want to reorient the way your hand pan is set up. What's, the, what's your favorite way of playing? Um, actually, I usually play, I have a little stand that I have that I, I usually keep it on because I have bottom notes. Um, but most of the time I have it on there. I'm going to start playing more with on my lap though, I guess. And then just having it like, see like this is just a good position. If you're sitting in a chair, um, just like Dave said. And one of the things is don't like, don't let your back get stiff and then also don't reach for the notes just lean into it like move side to side you want to keep your 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 back kind of moving so you don't like because you'll be playing for a long time if you have not already you can sit here for a long time just going over the notes so you want to make sure you're yeah you keep yourself loose yeah stay yeah. loose definitely yeah Yep. Um, especially it's like, did you mention like a uh, stand versus on your lap? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 On the stand, like I, I can, I move around a lot. So I can just like, it's just the hand pans. There, yeah. Just floating there. And then yeah, I yeah. could just like, woo, like yeah. just go around it. So, you know, everybody has their different thing. Just find the most comfortable spot, whether you're on the floor, whether you're on the table or a chair. Um, you just kind of want to learn how to play in all different positions, I guess. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so another like quick exercise just to kind of get started. Sometimes I'll just have people play um, uh, four or eight strokes on each hand. Let's just do four for now. So you do like four on the ding, two, three, four, left, two, three, four, just kind of back and forth. And you're just looking to get a nice even sound out of the instrument. And then like I said, you can switch to the notes on the side if you want to try something different. So I might switch to the notes over here. So you're just again looking for that nice, smooth, even sound. And make sure that the notes are ringing and sustaining. And you can go back to the middle if you want to. Oh yeah, and as beginners, don't forget, just breathe. 
So you forget to breathe frequently when you're learning something new. I do all the time. Oh, I'm learning something new and I forget to breathe. So make sure that as you're, as you're doing these exercises that you're breathing and allowing yourself to relax and don't stress yourself out too much. So that's one of the very basic intro exercises I have for people to get started with just getting the tone going with the hand pan. After you get the tone going with those notes, then you can start experimenting with maybe going up the scale. So one of the basic scales that I like to teach is uh, starting on your left hand on the ding note. <coughs> You're gonna play the ding with your left. The right hand is already over here, kind of in a position to hit the A. Then your left hand moves down to the C. Your right hand is already over here, so it's not gonna switch over to any of these notes over here. It's gonna go right to the note that's next door. This hand over here that played the C, it's going to go to the note that was next door, to the E. The D over here, look, it's going to go right up to the next note that's next to it. And then same thing with the left hand, which creeps on up. The right hand creeps on up. And then you finish it on, finish it out with the left hand on the C. Now his only has the A because it's an eight note, so yes. you would end on, on the, would end and the A on the right hand. So that's basically how you creep on up that scale. So you're going to start with your left hand on the ding. Then it goes right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, or right. <laughs> yeah. And as you get as you get going, so one of the things you can do is just breathe. So Daniel really likes the idea, and you've mentioned this to me before. Like you hit the note, and just let the entire note just ring and sustain. And it's like almost like you're taking a breath, right? You're taking a breath, yeah. And then play the next note. And just take your time. And the cool thing about the handpan is it makes such a really unique and interesting sound that even though you're playing it slowly, it's still kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really relaxing and interesting to do. So you just go very slowly, and as you get uh, better, as you get more comfortable with that scale, you can start moving with a little bit more speed. And at first, you're just going to go straight up and then start again. Right? And just let it go. Even just that, what I'm doing right there, it's kind of like a little mantra. Yeah, it is. I could just sit there and do that for like five minutes, and next thing you know, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, totally no, relaxed. Yeah, so those of you who are using the hand pan for meditative reasons or for relaxation, you don't have to do a lot. You can do some very simple things like this, just going straight up the scale to give yourself some peace of mind. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <Yeah. with> that. <laughs> then if you want, you can move uh, backwards. So let's say you get used to that and you get comfortable with that. You can start with your left hand or the right hand on this case. On the eight note, you start with your right hand. And you would go back down the scale. So we go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So on the on the eight note, it would start with the right. So let's try that. So right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Either way, you you end up on the left hand on the ding note. Mm -hmm. So um, those are the two scales that I always suggest to beginners, just to practice and get started on those. Uh, those are really good things to uh, work on. Uh, on the scales, I want to get yeah. one more tip on that. Um, like when, for the guys that have the rentals or, or either or, if you're going going around, you can either double hit this mm -hmm. and then start over again, or you can continue. It's like an endless loop, and if oh, you yeah, keep yeah, yeah, that yeah. endless loop going, oh my god. Going and see how long you can go. That's the challenge. Or if you want, like something like that would be great to chant to. So if you're somebody that enjoys chanting or vocalizing, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you could be like, oh. Uh -huh. and then take a breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a nice deep long breath, and then you could do another one. So you could do a lot of vocalizing with some very simple patterns on handpan uh, and really make it more of an um, instrument that you're playing along with, with, with yourself. Uh, or you could have somebody else play along or sing along with you. It's, it's a really fun instrument uh, in regards to that. 
What are you reading there, Daniel? Uh, Kay Lopez is saying, uh, I thought hitting the dimple eventually put the handpan out of tune. Awesome question. Thank you so much for posing that. Um, we get a lot of interesting questions from uh, people that are unfamiliar with handpans. And I don't know how long uh, you've been working with handpans. Uh, but no, that is not something that I am aware of. I have not heard that to be a problem. Um, hitting the note near the dimple, I have not heard, the, and I've not experienced it as a tuner or as somebody that sells these. <laughs> I've not heard or experienced that from anybody that I've talked with, and I've not heard that uh, myself. I've not experienced it myself. In fact, I usually basically tend to tell people to, to strike the dimple and kind of aim for it. I usually aim for the dimple. I tell people this. You're usually hitting the outside. Like if you think of the dimple, this actually stretches this metal. So if you think of a drum, it stretches over mm -hmm. the, the, the round mm -hmm. part. The so this yeah. is like the rim. <laughs> the dimple is like the rim. But actually the true note is in the middle of it, right? And then I usually aim for the center. As I got better, I almost cup it and you're almost... Well, maybe like, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I could, oh, I could just feel my hand go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finger it almost feels hits it, yeah. yeah. But I'm usually, most of it's hitting on the outside of the, 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 the actual note. So. But like Dave was saying, aiming for the center, because sometimes people hit it like on the outside, like that. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you're not getting that note. You don't get the full sound. Yeah, yeah you yeah, don't yeah, get yeah. the... So you want to have your finger come across to make sure you're aiming for the center so. yeah as far as far as damage is concerned I, a lot of people are concerned about damage and, and rightly so you don't want to damage your instrument uh, the only thing I really caution against people as far as damaging it with your hands is like if you're really slapping it hard like your arm is going here and you're forcing it down yeah. <laughs> that might be uh, something that could damage it uh, a lot of really adept musicians and handpan players they can get a nice full sound out of the instrument and strike it fairly hard and they're not going to throw it out of tune. It, it shouldn't go out of tune. If it does go out of tune, it usually means that there's something, the way it was built, uh, the way it was tuned originally, that maybe it was somehow, uh, maybe uh, not completely, I don't know how to ex express this, but uh, it just wasn't adequately tuned, maybe, uh, or it was somehow uh, left where it wasn't completely fine-tuned, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, so I use a mallet. Uh, to really hit these uh, notes hard when I when I make them, I, I really hit them hard because uh, I want them to stay in tune after I sell them. So that's one thing that I do. I don't know how. Good. Yeah, I don't know exactly. <laughs> I was I, like, I what are you doing, hard. Dave? He's yeah, like, yeah. Damn. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how all, all the other tuners out there uh, work on their notes and, and tune them, but I know that I use a mallet and I hit them very hard just to make sure that they don't go out of tune because I don't want that to happen with customers. Um, in regard to where to play the notes, mm -hmm. so Daniel was just talking, and I didn't really talk about this earlier, but you can see that the, the note is an oval shape. Um, and there's basically three harmonics that are tuned to each note. There's the fundamental pitch, which is the lowest sound that you're hearing, which is the basic sound of the note. So if I play this, uh, if you looked it up on like a screen, like a strobo tuner, it would say a D, right? It's hearing a D. But along with that, there's another D that's tuned here. It's called the octave. So the lowest D is in the center, the octave D is like up here, that's a higher sound. And then on the edge, ah, you have it, uh, an A, and that's even higher. So it goes D, uh, fundamental pitch, D octave, and then there's a fifth above that. So you're really hearing three primary um, harmonics coming out of this, the, each one of these notes. So when you were talking about hitting in the center of the note, when you're hitting in the center, you're basically activating all three of those harmonics basically equally, and you're getting a nice full sound. Uh, if you start hitting around the edges of the note, you start finding that some parts uh, you're going to hear like that la 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 way up there. That's the fifth of the A. But the F sounds a lot, oh, sorry, the F, the fifth of the F. It sounds a lot different than the F does because mm. it's really high. Mm -hmm. So an adept handpan player learns how they get all these frequencies out of these notes and they use them to, to their benefit. So uh, when you're watching these handpan players on YouTube and they're playing it and all of a sudden you're hearing all these little shimmering sounds come out of these instruments, it's because they're activating different kind of harmonics out of each one of these notes. Oh, absolutely. That's kind of an advanced thing. No, it totally so, is. Yeah. The for, for everybody else, aim for the center. Yeah, aim for the center. <laughs> you know, once you get better, you figure it out like how you want to play it. Uh, when you watch people's hands and different players, they have different techniques. They take things a little bit differently. 
you have like a flutter oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. playing style. Yeah. Some people are just like, yeah. Some yeah. people use more of the finger or the hand, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. But it's all what you feel. This basically, it's not about learning the hand pan, it's getting your music out through the hand pan, expressing your music. Yeah, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, it's funny, we were talking about how people approach music earlier before the show was on, and, yeah. uh, and I, I'm kind of two different people. Sometimes I will think about it very technically, like chords, like a C major chord, D minor chord, that sort of thing. And other times I just want to chill out and I just want to just like close my eyes and just just hear the sound coming in through my ears and that sort of thing and almost close my eyes and just let it all go. Um, so yeah, there's multiple ways you can approach this instrument and there's no right way or wrong way really. No, um, not at all. Actually, I've been talking to all the customers and everybody has the same story pretty much. Um, saw the hand, you know, I heard the hand pan or didn't even see it, just heard the sound. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Found out what it was. Did some research, found us, and then now they have a hand pan. So, and most of them know music, um, never played an instrument. Um, basically, I think a lot of people are just trying to get in touch with their their music, which is awesome because what I found out, everybody has music and they're looking to get it out. Yeah, right. Everybody's an instrument. Yeah, they have and a heartbeat. I, you know, to that point, you know, with, with <laughs> everyone has music inside of them, and you want to learn how to express that music. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the stuff we're talking about today, just learning how to get the certain sounds uh, from the instrument, so learning how to touch the instrument and hit the instrument and strike it in different ways, that's going to allow you the, the tools to yes. figure out how to express the music that's within you. So uh, that's one good thing about learning how to uh, manipulate the instrument. And so um, there's one other thing, speaking of how to like get different sounds out of the instrument, I want to show them a little bit about the interstitial. Oh yeah, actually this, is, uh, this segues right into Randy Pazer says, can you share some of the percussive tapping that ah. people do on the rims or the side? Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So that's my good next... Segue. Yeah, good, good segue. Yeah, good segue. That's They're exactly all... what I was going to show you later. I get, I get now, so play. sometimes you'll hear people playing the, uh, the backbeat on the hand hand. Something like that, right? Yeah. So now you've got that backbeat going on. And basically what I'm doing is I'm striking with my finger uh, just between the metal here. So this is the metal between the notes. You can kind of see it here, right? And like here between the notes. That's called interstitial metal. And so that interstitial metal should be kind of having a dead or a dry sound to it. And so when you strike it, it kind of gives a little bit of a snap sound. You can also kind of strike it near the, the edge any, any area where it kind of has like a uh, muted or a dead or a dry sound, you can do that. And as hand pair and players get to know their instrument, they usually probably find specific spots that they like best. And yeah. So. Well, well, this is actually when I was, even though this has limited notes, you do have the interstitial also, mm -hmm. okay? And if you, if you look at the corners between the, if you hit it right there, oh, yeah. it makes a sound. Mm -hmm. So it's just a duller sound, mm -hmm. but you can play those. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, right. And yeah. it's all in the scale, so it's like hey, it goes, it goes around, so you can be. And yeah, those are two slightly different sounds that yeah, you can yeah. use. It's pretty. It's yeah, pretty absolutely. Cool. So um, yeah, so that's basically how you get the percussive sounds out of it. You just and, and what I do, it, it's a little bit different um, than when you strike the note. When you strike the note, your finger hits it and comes off of it, like with the bell technique that we were talking about. You strike the note, your finger immediately comes off. When I hit the metal between the notes to get that percussive sound, I usually keep my finger on it, and I aggressively kind of keep my finger on it, so it gets a nice snap out of it. Uh, you can do it where the, the finger comes off, but to me it doesn't quite give the same snap. You know, it just feels more comfortable when I kind of like lay it on the note, or lay it on the steel and just really slap it down. So uh, that's one of the things I do to get that sound. Some people are really amazingly adept with that uh, sound. They can do it with both hands. I tend to use it most uh, with my right hand. I'm right hand dominant. Mm. Uh, but I've seen people use both hands. Um, I've also seen some people will play it here for a while. But as if they move over here, now they're playing it over here. As the passage and the melody changes, they will change the position of that hand. So they're not just using that one spot anymore. They're moving it around. So yeah, it's really amazing. Usually when I, like for me practicing, because my left hand is way less than my right hand, so 
like doing one is just going back and forth one two three four because you want to get like a kind of an even tone on the percussive and you can practice on the D also on the edge it's a cool right here also you can do side to side on the interstitials one two three four oh, yeah. just to get that practice also what I do is for like bass snare and then go to the other side bass snare so I use both sides to get that snare mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can just so you can do it on your left hand because sometimes when yeah. you're doing your beats and if you don't have that strong like, yeah. <laughs> left, it messes up your whole beat. So you have to practice that side. Du, du, yeah, du, du. it's like kind of crazy. Yeah, I've truthfully I've never really spent a whole lot of time on my left hand. There's also my wedding rings on my left hand, so frequently I get that snap from my ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So, yeah, so yeah. for some reason I just kind of avoided my left hand for years and years. Yeah, One of these yeah. days maybe I'll work on it some more. All right, it looks like we've got some more questions here. All right, uh, Susan Cornwall um, says, using a stand with an 11 note Luna, how would the tripod be oriented uh, to the body in order to access the three notes below for the best sound? Um, I, I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, it, I got a looper and microphone. Oh yeah, Adrian, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Amplified microphone, X, but the mic doesn't pick up the hand hand sound well, can't buy it on the kind of mic. Oh, okay, cool. All right, cool. All right. Got, <laughs> we got all the answers. Yeah, regarding, this, <laughs> regarding the bottom uh, and the stand, so you see how this note, ha this hand pan has three notes on the bottom, just like the Luna 11. Um, what I always do is I always aim for one of the tripod legs to go between the two notes that are closest to each other. And so, those are usually on my right hand side and they should be on the right hand side for you as well. And one, one way I do it is sometimes I'll just cup my hand like this. I'll find those two notes on the bottom. So the, my heel of my hand is here. Uh, the fingers are here on the other note. And then as I'm putting it down onto the stand, I just feel for this leg right here. And then I know, okay, that's where it needs to go. And then I can kind of adjust it, but I'm still cupping those two notes with my hand as I'm adjusting the hand pan onto the stand. So that's usually where I put it and it should work for you as well. If it didn't work for you, I'd be surprised. So that's how I, that's how yeah. I do it too is I cut like basically what you did. Like I'll yeah. see it cuz it fits perfectly right there. You do have to adjust it to get the angle and stuff and you might get really close, but just, you know, cuz your your hands going to be coming underneath like this. And usually the stand is in the way, so you have to like flick it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Duh, and you just know it's there. So like, yeah. what I do is like, there's a practice. If you one, two, th two, three, four, that's it. Yeah. And then one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, that, and then go back and forth. Yeah. And then just find the position that helps you with that. Yeah. And then also just remember, as you're reaching, you got to move your body. Sometimes yeah. people like. They go like this. Yeah, I can't get to, it. Yeah. I can't get it. And you're gonna have to move. So. Yeah. <laughs> my preference when I play handpan, uh, I've got longer legs, so I tend to like to have it in my lap. And I feel like when I play the bottom notes, everything's a little bit closer to me, a little bit more accessible. But if it is on the stand, that's what I have to do. I usually put my hand there, find the top of the stand, one of those legs. And then I kind of position it where it's comfortable, keeping my hand right there so that the stand stays away from those notes. Because you don't want that stand to touch either one of the notes. If it touches one of the notes, then it mutes it. So then at that point, you should be able to. You should be able to play both. Yeah. And by the way, notice that I'm going underneath for these notes. I'm not going over the top to reach down like this. So I, I like to reach underneath like yeah, that. That's, that's my preferred method there. I've seen people do that, but that's on different types of pans because they yeah. have smaller notes. Yeah, something. it all depends on how the notes are tuned yeah. and where their placement is. And yeah, that sort yeah, of thing. for sure. Good question. Thank you for Good asking one. that. Next one was, what was it about? Oh, the, oh, the, the loopers. Looper. Looper action. I think this was the question right here. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah, regarding loopers, I know that that's a, a lot of interest. People have a lot of interest in loopers. I have not actually had a lot of experience myself with uh, working with loopers. Um, in the future, Daniel wants to do a show with, because he has one. Yes. He wants to provide some information on that. And I also know a really exceptional handpan player who's mentioned to me that he uh, would be happy to do like a, a show with us too, talking about. I, I understand, Adrian, about the microphone because I have a... If you guys want a Shure 58 Beta instrument mic, and that's the one I got to, and I would just put it down next to it, but I'd have to get really close 
to get like the sound that you want. But actually, Dave um, has that transducer. What is it called? Uh, there's a condenser mic and a uh, dynamic mic. So dynamic mics are like vocal mics where they want to they only want to get the sound that's next to the mouth. They don't want all the sounds from the room getting into that microphone. So like a classic Shure SM58 or a Shure SM57 yeah. microphone, uh, those are dynamic microphones and they're made for vocals primarily or drums. Uh, and oh, drums, no, I have the drums 57. Being like dr I have the 57 is yeah. the instrument beta. Right. It's like, and it's meant for that, but it's still, you know, you if you have a mixer or something like that, you can boost it and all that, but that's, you're just gonna have to mess with microphone placement. Normally, Dave puts two mics, one on top and one on bottom. Yeah. And so you can get the bass. Um, but the, the, the coolest thing that Dave just showed me was they have this uh, pickup. Oh, yeah. The magnetic pickup. I don't know who it was made by, but I think they're like 150 bucks. And Ensole, E N S O U L. Okay. And basically, it's two pieces. I don't have it here with me, but it just connects and it connects to the bottom. And you add it to this, oh my gosh, it's it's a crazy... Yeah, it's helpful. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Especially it doesn't, for live playing. It enhances the sound, like it's so awesome. Yeah, I'm that's like, a good point. I think an insole microphone for what yeah. you're working with with a looper would probably be ideal. Uh, I think it's great for live stuff. I, I'm not a super fan of it for maybe recording. Yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah. you might get a... I don't know. I don't know how it sounds recording-wise, but live it's crazy because if you have like like the um, echo and the mixer oh, like the, the effects, reverb and that's reverb what, yeah. and all that so you can add the perfect reverb where it matches yeah, right. the sound right going out and it's like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. nice it's yes. really nice so yeah so regarding the sm57 or the the was it beta is that what he called yeah the like sm57 beta, beta yeah, yeah that's the one i use for or had on here and it sounds okay it's just yeah, again, those are made for vocals, basically, or like a drum set drum, where yeah. they just want to get the sound right there. So the problem with miking a handpan with one of those microphones is it's, it's really just trying to get the sound that's over here, yes. and it doesn't really get the sound that's on the other side of the handpan, so you might be dealing with some of that. Um, so there's another uh, microphone called a condenser microphone, which basically picks up everything more equally. And that's what we have um, up here. Yeah, so the, but actually this is a directional can condenser because it actually has like oh, a yeah, button the, back oh, to yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, condensers, uh, they've got, the good thing is they pick up everything. The bad thing is they pick up everything. <laughs> so the bad thing is like if, if there's a clock on the wall or if there's somebody yelling or some a car goes by, uh, you're gonna get all of that sound in as well into that microphone. But I would say probably if I was using a looper, um, I would probably go for a condenser microphone, uh, unless it was a super loud environment. Uh, but anyway, it's going to take some practice, I think. Yeah, Overall, it, it there's, like the, there's different setups up there. I think the transducer is kind of cool for the live. Um, I've, I've only practiced at home. I've never done, that, done it live. Um, there was, there's some questions on there, but it's pretty amazing like once you can do all this stuff looper that i have right now is called the rc 500 it's a two channel but they have another one wait i have the rc 300 who's it boss boss okay yeah. boss rc 300 is a two channel it's awesome but they have a new one which has five channels so if you want to bring in other instruments your voice all this stuff it, that's it's pretty awesome and it's all in one small package yeah. And because I've seen like the setups where they have the looper, then you get the effects and all this other stuff. And then, but this one is just one. It's still complicated, but it's, you have it just in one spot. So it's, I think it would be easier to learn, I guess. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody has their thing. It's kind of yeah. crazy. All right. Once again, don't forget we've got online lessons for anybody out there that's interested in online lessons and learning at home. Uh, you can go to our, uh, I think the link was in the comments thread above. I believe it was put in there. But you can also go to uh, Instagram at Dave Zylan Instruments. Oh, at Dave Zylan Instruments, and I just posted the QR code on the uh, Instagram account. So check it out. Uh, go to our. You can also go to the website. Go to our website, Dave Zylan Instruments .com, and you go to I believe it's services. What is it, Dan? Did you remember? What's that? What's, like, where's the online lessons? Is it services? Uh, it's under. Um, I think it's services. Services. Yeah. yeah, go to services tab, and then it's on. It says online lessons there. Uh, so we call that the DII community. It's really helpful for anybody like yourselves who are like trying to figure out how to use the bottom notes on these hand pans and how to figure out how to make melodies and the scales. I, I go over like tons of information about how these instruments are set up and how you can make music uh, by using them. Um, uh, let's see. So Daniel, you had another thing that you wanted to talk about, and you were talking about finding and connecting with music. Oh yeah. I, well, this year. Um 
last year I had I think I've talked about it quite a bit but my goal was to see because like everybody that was coming in it was all about like for the hand pen it was about like feeling good mm -hmm. um, oh right 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 you know yeah. what I mean like uh you know, getting in touch with their music, and I felt that for a lot of people, and especially myself. And I always wondered, like, I wanted to find. They said I wanted to learn more about it and about sound healing and how I can maybe find out practical uses for the handpan and the ukulele to, you know, just help yourself stress. Like, it, why you want to play music is because you're probably stressed out, and it just helps with the, mm -hmm. you know, so a lot of people are doing that for meditation and stuff. So I wanted to find out practical uses, practical, like, why, you know, why it happens, you know, stuff like that. And then it came down to, like, I just turned 50 this year, so I'm looking back and reminiscing on life. What would I tell, what would I tell my kids? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How to live life. And I guess it came down to live life like music. And then, um, so, living life like music, there's a lot of things to it, but this year I'm gonna live life like music intentionally and find out like practical uses and you know examples of doing that and it has to do with what I previously talked about which are the four principles of music mm -hmm. which is rhythm uh, melody harmony and silence and and that's what it has to do with and you can use that as a metaphor for life now it's it's kind of true because I'm looking at it uh, yesterday I had like just some like questions about life and then I was trying to metaphor it with you know the four principles and it just made sense and I was just like oh okay this is what I need to do yeah <laughs> you know it just made me feel better so like if we can live I think if we live life like music and really think about that it's it's pretty awesome because I look at Dave right now we were talking about that question I go because he does Dave lives life like his music he puts his music into the instruments to share with you guys so you guys can have a good experience so and it's that's I love it mm -hmm. I, it's just it's a good thing so I want to talk more about it I'm not an expert on it and actually I'm just being I'm just experimenting being on thoughtful, myself being thoughtful. yeah just being thought about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah just being really thoughtful because we don't think about it yeah we honestly don't think about it you know I, I love I still love because Daniel's been talking about those four elements of music for a while now uh, it's the what you said rhythm rhythm melody, melody harmony, harmony and silence, and silence. Yes. so uh, I find Christine the, Stevens. There you go. That's music awesome. medicine author, amazing. Uh, I think we have links to the four principles in the bottom. If not, ask me about it because I have a sheet on it, and then it has the book that you should read if you're really into music medicine. It's yeah. awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you're gonna love what I'm gonna say here. All right, go. So, go, yeah. go, 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 <laughs> All right. go. so if you just take the first one, the rhythm one, like these days, I think a lot of people are stressed out because the rhythm of life is unexpected and kind of confusing these days so we're all slightly out of rhythm and I think it's driving us a little crazy because things aren't as to be expected exactly, right? exactly so uh, I think one thing that Daniel would think would be good for anybody out there that just recently got a hand pan is to create some rhythm in your life by creating some time every day right mm -hmm. every, every day, day play it like 5 10 15 minutes uh, and then you can learn a little bit more about the hand pan and just get that extra um, time in of practice but also you're creating some rhythm in your life. Well, and uh, also too, that. you're getting in touch with your rhythm. As you get better, you're getting connected with your fingers and mm -hmm. your hands moving. You're making those connections, so you're really learning yourself. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy like, yeah. to think of it that way, yeah. yeah. So the, yeah, the rhythm of life is, is messed up. And like, just like you said, it's like kind of crazy. And that's why people are like drawn to the hand pen because I believe it's a trigger to everybody's music that mm -hmm. they have inside of them that they've been looking for. So yeah, that's my, you that's my opinion. Express and, yeah, 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 totally express it and stuff like yeah. that. So, yeah. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Does anybody have any final uh, comments? See. Please put them in the comments uh, area. We're gonna, otherwise we're gonna take off here in a second. So get those keys burning. <laughs> if you have any final questions or comments, it'd be uh, great to hear from you. Here, I'm just gonna read off some oh, comments. That Daniel's got some more. Said. Pamela Pilker said, you guys are cool and much preached for your time and thoughts. Thank you, Pam. You're cool, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, just all you guys that um, mentioned stuff, we love to connect with the, all, all our customers, and you guys are, have some great things to say. There are some other people. Belinda, love to hear both of you play briefly. Ooh, Belinda. Yeah, we can play. Yeah, we can play a little. We'll play off one after we go on. Uh, Randy says, thank you kindly. Great workshop. Appreciated. Let's see. 
there's more. I just want to appreciate everybody for all their stuff. Oh, uh, Agarman said, my left hand does not land on the pan easily as the right hand. I'm assuming this is just a matter of practice to improve. You are right, Agarman. Um, let's see. Thank you very much. A lot of comments. Thank you guys for your comments. Appreciate it. Awesome. We're gonna play. Dave, last anything? Yeah. So uh, I I recently kind of worked out this cool little rhythm. I don't know if I'll be able to do it right now, but <laughs> yeah, hopefully I can follow you. That's yeah. Cool. And I just normally I play this thing we call the Austin Funk. It's just a nice rhythm to play. It's very simple. try something a little different All right, today. Go, go. You go, so you this lead. one, uh, the reason I like this one, it was a little bit of a challenge for me, it's because I was playing with that back feet, right? So I had the back feet here in my right hand, but then the next part was da da da. So you hear that pattern? The problem I was having was this note when I'm hitting it with my left hand, I was also having the strike here with the back feet. So, boom, slap, and hit, and then start the rhythm over again. He's more concrete. So you can see how that was kind of a little bit confusing for my brain. And you'll find that too, if you start doing some more complex rhythms and patterns, usually when your brain has a struggle with it is sometimes when, you're, when your hands hit together, strangely enough. <laughs> yeah, it is. So yeah. yeah, that's weird. So like if you play a rhythm like this, where it's going back and forth, that one's kind of easy to think about. But if you had to play something where your hands all of a sudden are playing together, your brain's like, oh, wait a minute, this one's supposed to be separate from that one, and then it gets confusing. But yeah, yeah. So I had to work a little bit on this. But So I'm going to play that, and you can just okay. float over the top. Sweet. Yeah. I love it. Have a great afternoon. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Happy Saturday. See you guys next time. Yep.